Hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Uh, we posted a poll a couple of days ago as to what kind of tutorials you're most likely uh, to watch and like, and we basically categorize them between front end CSS and JavaScript tutorials, basically like all the tutorials we've had so far, and one, how to interact with backend APIs from front end applications. And the reason we did that uh, is because a lot of people really asked for this, but also we can see that in YouTube, there are not so many tutorials that talk about these actually. So today we're gonna go ahead and kickstart the series of tutorials on how to interact with backend APIs from front end applications. In this session, we're gonna go ahead and uh, for the sake of time and for the sake of simplicity, because the whole reason here is to be able to know how to fetch data from the front from the front end application uh, we're going to create a really simple backend api we, we're not going to put that much effort on it if you had any questions or comments please go ahead and say because then uh, over the couple of next sessions we're going to build on top of these uh, principles and concepts that we're going to talk about today so let's get started first things first you need to have node.js installed uh, on your computer if you i'm right now on mac but if you are on windows it doesn't matter go ahead to nodejs.org you can also search it in google and download this recommended for most users when you download it if you go to your terminal uh, what you're going to see is basically if you do node-v you're going to see a version I do have multiple versions on on my machine uh, and for that reason I'm gonna I'm having a tool called MVM to control uh, the different versions that I have uh, you can go ahead and also sort of install it it's not required at all you don't need to do that I'm just going to just do it because I need a, a higher version of node this is pretty much a very old uh, version so I'm gonna do NVM use um, 900 it's not still the latest version as you can see here the latest version is 1014 but at the time i installed the latest version uh it's uh version 9 i haven't upgraded it but the tutorial works with this again you don't need to know these uh node nvm use thingy all right let's get started first things first let's create a directory called uh, i'm gonna call it backend and i'm gonna go inside of it what I'm need to what you need to know is that Node comes with a package manager as well called npm. If you are familiar with it, it's fine. Otherwise, please go ahead and look at the docs and tutorials and basically try to learn Node if you're interested as a, a backend API development technology based on JavaScript. But for now, what I'm going to do if you install this uh, Node here uh, from this. Uh, website through this you're going to have the npm as well which is uh, the abbreviation for node package manager so npm install what i'm going to install is a, a very famous sort of framework for api developments called happy so if you go to the google and search happy the first thing that comes is happy.js so if i go here you can see that it says a rich framework for building application and services. Again, these are all very opinionated. This is the fastest way we can create a backend API. There are other libraries and frameworks like the most uh, sort of well-known is Express.js. You can go ahead and use it as well. But for the sake of time and this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and use Happy. So it already says how to install it. So first things first, you don't need to do npm install. First, let's build a project to do that we have to do npm init right it basically initializes our project it needs a package name let's call it backend I'm just pressing enter here uh, choosing the default ones entry point index.js uh, you just can go ahead and press enter all the way and now what I need to do is uh, just listing the directory you can see that a package.json is now created if i show you the uh, content of it you can see it's pretty much whatever we chose a name backend version the default version and all that uh, you know questions that it asked it already put them all in the file package.json right and 
when you create package.json now if you go ahead and do npm install happy let's uh it took it to take a while okay it was pretty fast now if i do uh see the content of the package.json you can see that it added a dependencies key here with the happy and the version which is pretty much the latest version of it uh, and it installed that as a dependency so it's very important that you first do npm init create this package file uh, and then you basically can sort of uh, whenever you install a new package, it goes here and you can reuse this package.json in different places and different computers. Uh, you can commit it to your Git repository or your, uh, you know, repository, whatever it is. So now, another thing that you might or might not know, I have been using an editor called Sublime Text. But a uh, while ago, I came across this awesome editor from Microsoft which is called code, uh, which is called Microsoft. Uh, I'm not sure the name of it. Let's search for it, code editor. Yes, it's Visual Studio Code, right? So go ahead and install this. It's actually free. It's very useful. I already have it. So I'm going to just kick start opening it. Uh, you can see that it's very, if you, when you download it, it has a dark theme. I changed it to light. Uh, it's just a preference. Now you can see that you have a package.json here. There is a package log JSON that gets added. And then as you can see here, it creates a directory called node modules. And inside that we have our uh, sort of module or the happy library that we installed over here. This means that we can now go ahead and use it in our project. So now going back to the browser, going back to the happy.js website, if you scroll down, it actually already says all the things we've said. Now what I need to do is just create a server.js. We can go ahead and create a server uh, server.js. We chose to have main index.js. So I'm going to go ahead in my editor here, uh, in my code editor, uh, and I'm going to close this in the top root folder. I'm going to create an index.js. And then inside it, I'm going to go ahead and copy all the content of this file and paste it in my index.js, right? I'm going to go ahead really quickly. You, you still don't need to know everything, but I'll try my best to describe what it really does. So if you remember, we installed happy library and it ended up in the node modules directory within our project. Now, in order to use it in JavaScript, obviously, you can create a constant uh, here. It called it happy. And the way you, re you basically include it in your project is by using require happy.js. The next thing to do is calling dot server or the server kind of method on that happy uh, sort of constant that we created uh, like this. And then you pass an object to it. You can see that this is an object notation in JavaScript. You pass it a host. Localhost is your local machine. And then you just define a port called 8000 here. You can choose whatever above, I guess, 4000 because 4000 beneath 4000 are the system ports. You cannot use them. But above uh, port 4000, let's say port 8000, it's what they use. They used. And then here you just define your server. And now what you need to do is to define routes. And here they have already created a route. It has a method get path dash hello, and then it has a handler. So if you're interested to learn the concepts, if you don't already know, uh, there is something called REST API uh, definition. Go ahead and search for it for REST API, try to learn it. But basically here, just to just to tell you what it does, is that we are defining a resource here using the route function, passing an object. Method is get. Get method basically means, you know, whenever you go to a website and you type something like the things we did over here, happy.js, it actually calls uh, the server uh, passing, asking for method get. So basically server understands that uh, when you enter here, when you ask happy.js, the call goes with a method get, meaning that I'm getting something from the server uh, without giving it anything other than the path 
that I need to know, right? So we also have post here, for example, when you have a form that you fill in online and you send it, it's actually a post method because apart from knowing the path, you also, so this path could be like google.com slash hello. Um, this path basically, uh, the post method apart from the path, you also pass some other informations like name or surname or whatever that form. That's why you need to pass uh, the method as post, right? So yeah, I'm not going to dive really deep into it. But basically what we're defining here is that we are defining a resource on our uh, sort of API which ends with slash hello. So basically it's going to, the full address will be HTTP localhost with the port 8000 and then slash hello. We, we will see it a little bit later. And then you have, an, you have a handler method here, as you can see, or function. In this case, it just literally returns hello world. And then a little bit of uh, other stuff for how to start the server so you don't need to really bother about this. So if I save this file, going back to my terminal, now if I do, the way you run that is you know that we have this index.js, which has our code. So you do node index.js, right? Now you can see it already says server running at HTTP localhost 8000, which is whatever it's saying here when it starts the server right now knowing this address which is our base url and then knowing that we have a path slash hello if i go to the browser let's go to the browser uh, and in a new browser let's just type http localhost 8000 and then slash hello right that's our resource so now you can see that what it returns is actually a hello world, which is basically defined in my handler. Again, when a call comes to this resource or what we call endpoint in the sort of REST API terminology, when a call hits this endpoint, we want to return hello world. Now, just to change this, I'm going to define an object. Let's create an object const response again JavaScript object so let's let's give it a name uh, let's call it backend or let's call it code whose backend tutorial then let's put a type tutorial and then let's put platform and then let's say uh, YouTube right so now instead of this hello world, what I'm going to return is this object response. So now if I type response and save the file, going back to the terminal or console, I'm going to shut down the server and I'm going to run it again, node index.js, right? Now if I hit the same endpoint in the browser, which was supposed to be hello world before, now if I hit this and press enter, you can see that we get back our object so name code who's back in tutorial type tutorial platform youtube and this is pretty much what we use uh, as an endpoint you can always go ahead as well and change the endpoint maybe hello is not a good name maybe just give me i don't know like uh, resources right and then here uh, instead of defining an object i can define an array so the array notation is like this. I'm going to paste the object we created inside it, comma. I'm just going to copy another one. And then I'm just going to paste it. And then instead, this is it's going to be front end application tutorial. Again, type tutorial and the platform YouTube. So now if I save this, which I did, and run the server again, again, shutting it down, control C or command C, and then type index.js again. Going back to the browser, if I, instead of hello, because we renamed it to resources, right? So now you can see that I actually got an array with two objects in it. Uh, and these are, for example, our tutorial. So the name of the first tutorial, Kotus backend tutorial, type, uh, you know, tutorial and platform YouTube, and then the next tutorial, let's say in our list, is go to front end application tutorial type tutorial and platform. And this is what you can 
basically call from the front end applications to get the data from the back end. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please go ahead and comment down any questions you have or any concerns you have. Please go ahead and tell me if I can make it any better. But again, uh, I just wanted to give a quick uh, sort of introduction to this new series that we're going to do and create a really quick backend API uh, so that we can use it in the next tutorial, creating a front end application and using the technologies in front end to be able to retrieve these informations from the backend. Another very important, uh, you know, point for a beginner, beginner kind of uh, uh, visitors is that this is, do, do not confuse this with server rendering websites, right? So for example, WordPress is one of those. WordPress is based on PHP and this is ba that is basically a server rendering. Everything that gets rendered uh, and you see in the browser is actually rendered from the backend. But this is another concept. It's basically a stateless sort of system where you have an isolated backend like this and then you're going to have a frontend application could be written in any JavaScript libraries, could be pure JavaScript, could be like React, could be Angular, could be Vue or whatever library that you know. So make sure you understand that and please stay tuned for the next tutorial. I'm super happy to be doing these tutorials again and see you next time. Goodbye.